so glad you all are joining us today. Welcome. Good morning, and welcome to our service of worship today here at the First United Methodist Church of Rockwall, Texas. My name is Joe Poole, pastor of our church, and on behalf of our congregation and staff, I want to welcome you to this worship service today. This is the eighth Sunday that we have been worshiping in a new way as we respond to the COVID-19 virus, and I thank you for continuing to tune in, to be a part, to be connected as we worship together. Our church seeks to take Christ into our lives and out into the world, and there are many ways that we can be connected to our church. I want to direct you to our website that is updated each and every day with new information regarding opportunities in the life of our church, our small groups that are meeting, and ways that we can be engaged in mission in our community and around the world even though we may not be able to be together in person. There are many ways that we can be connected and be the church beyond the walls of our buildings. And so I want to lift up to you just a few things. Um, last Sunday, we celebrated Senior Recognition Sunday. and We had a special video highlighting our graduating seniors. If you happen to miss that or would like to download that, you can go to our website and there will be a direct link to the senior recognition of our graduating seniors of 2020. And also, next week, as we are aware, is Mother's Day. And so we have a couple things in the work and we need your help. If you could send us a photo of mom, in whatever form that may be, our mother, our grandmothers, um, with your children or grandchildren, however you want to express appreciation to who you call mom in your life, if you could send those to us. And you can send that to Reverend Christina Hildebrand at childebrand at fumcrockwall.com. You can also send that to our Director of Communications, Amy Moore at amore at fumcrockwall.com. You can even drop it by and we'll be glad to scan it and return the photo to you. And also, we, we have a special thing that I, I need your help. And so, children, if you would like to talk one of your parents into driving by the church on Thursday or Friday or even next Sunday, you can pick up a special craft project and a flower that you can give to mom on Mother's Day. And so watch for the email that's going to go out. We're trying to make this a secret and a surprise for our moms. And so watch your email, go to our website, and you'll find information about this project. There are so many things that are happening in the life of our church that also today is Communion Sunday. And so what I invite you to do, you can either pause the recording now to go get your bread and juice, um, or you can pause it later before we celebrate the Sacrament of Holy Communion, or you can also come to our church today between 12 and 1 and receive the Sacrament of Holy Communion in a drive through way with Reverend Sandy Hurd. She'll be offering the sacrament, she'll be praying with you, 
And so if you would like to use that as an option to celebrate the sacrament, then please come to our church. During this special time, if you have need, please let us know and we will reach out to you. If you have a special prayer request, please make that known. And so we continue to be connected to one another through the Holy Spirit. And so I want to thank you for continuing to be a part as we worship together today. Good morning. I invite you to join your voice at home with ours as we say our call to worship. God is like the gentle shepherd, leading, leading us, us beyond, beyond our, our wants, wants, leading us beyond our fears, leading, leading us, us to, to a place, place of rest, rest, where we sing the music of God's love and, and feel, feel new strength to walk through the valleys and shadows of life. life. Our opening hymn of praise is number 369, Blessed Assurance. Let, our, let us raise our hearts and voices as we sing together. Now at this time in our service, we invite all of those children that are watching with us, draw near to your screen, to your iPad, to your phone for this, our Sharing the Gospel with Children. Um, today I brought a stick, but it's a special kind of stick. It's what we call a shepherd's crook. And Jesus described himself in many different ways. But one of the ways that he described himself was as the good shepherd. And so I brought a crook today, and crooks are neat because you can use it to, to hit the wolves and the beasts before they get to the sheep. And also, if you see a lamb that is headed into trouble, you can use this and hook it and pull it close to the shepherd. Today, we're going to share images of Jesus as the good shepherd and as the gate by which we enter into our life with God. And so I thank you for being a part of this, our children's time. So let's put our hands together and let's pray. Dear God, we ask your blessing upon all of our children. And so keep them safe and watch over them and be with us as we guide them into faith. And we give you thanks for Jesus, the Good Shepherd. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you, boys and girls. As we come to our time of offering today, I especially want to thank you for your continued giving and financial support of our church. Many of the missions and ministries of our church continue, and there are many missions and missions, ministries and agencies that are looking to our church to help them during this time. Your financial support is crucial. 
You can either mail your offering to our church. You can drop it by when you're out doing your essential shopping. Um, you can also go to our website and our safe and secure online giving platform. You can even take out your phone at this very moment and text to the number 77977 the message F-U-M-C-R and hit send and it will take you directly to our giving platform. Also, uh, we continue to give an update and receive commitments for our Trinity Project Becoming One. And so you can continue to mail in your cards, to drop them by, and you can also go to our website and make your commitment there. It is confidential and it is secure. And as of today, we have received commitments from 239 families and households representing $2,605,862.52. Our church is continuing to look to the future, and I thank God for you and your vision for what this church is and what this church will become. And so let us pray. Dear God, we truly give you thanks that we can be a part of what is good in this world as we are generous, as we are giving, and as we serve. And so receive this offering which we dedicate to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What a gift is that prayer unites us during this time of separation with one another and with God. And so we give thanks for the gift of prayer. And as we center our hearts and minds, I want to remind us all to be in prayer for those who are in hospitals, as well as those who are discharged from area hospitals this week, particularly S.E. Sifo Kuti. We hold in our hearts all of those on hospice care and those living in assisted living facilities. We hold in our hearts all of those who grieve as we lift up Cindy Patrick and Diana Chapman and family as they grieve the loss of their mother, Anna Wade Steger. We also hold in our hearts Oscar Mathura, who is mourning the loss of his brother, Cedric Mathura of New York. As with each week, we pray for our president and world leaders, our military uh, and first aid responders, and our medical professionals. Would you join with me as we pray together? Holy and loving God, we give you thanks that you welcome us with open arms. You watch over us while we grieve and comfort us in times of need. You give us hope when we find ourselves doubting and love when we're sad. You give us faith in times of confusion. And so help us, living God, during this time of quiet reflection to remember that your love for us is unconditional. Help us to remember the call that you have placed on each one of our lives, to love our neighbors and to love you with all that we have and all that we are. Help us to remember our people and our places where the needs are great and the ache is strong, where chemo treatments continue, where hunger persists, and where families are falling apart, oh God. And so on this day, we pray for those little things that we struggle with, we pray for conflicts we feel within ourselves and between us and those we love. We pray for guidance and compassion and for the opening of a path to the future. What we do know, O oh God, is that when we gather this morning with all of our needs, you hear us. Some of us are facing physical problems and are in need of healing. Others of us are in need of healing of a different kind, emotional and spiritual healing. Some are facing family problems, and some are weary with the struggles of life and seek assurance that someday this too shall pass. Others of us face financial difficulties and loss of employment and don't know what the future holds for them. We also pray, O oh God, for those things that give us joy and hope, for the things that we trust in and believe in and will sacrifice for. May we always hold in our hearts gratitude for those things that bless us with their presence, forgiveness for the ways we have turned from those blessings, and the willingness to open ourselves anew to this beautiful and hurting world. Hear us now as we, your children, pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we begin our time together, I especially want to thank you for continuing to be a part of our worshiping community and also know that immediately after our sharing the word together, uh, we will move into our sacrament of Holy Communion. And so if you would like to pause now and go get your elements of bread and cup and have those ready, uh, that'd be great. If not, you can pause it a little bit later before that moment in our service. And again, thank you for being a part of our service today. The text that we go to today is from John's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Hear these words. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep 
fold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used his figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. May God bless the reading, hearing, and doing of this God's holy word. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Shortcuts. It always seems like we are looking for a shortcut. Save a little time, save a little money, save a little distance to use the saved time and money and effort for something useful like watching more TV or playing another round of golf. We, we want to take a shortcut, but be careful of the shortcut. My freshman year at Southwestern University, my professor was T. Her Walter Herbert, PhD. And I was taking a literature class. He was professor of literature, and, and I was also working at the First United Methodist Church of Georgetown and his son was in my youth group and so on Sundays he was Walt but on Mondays he was Dr. Herbert and and so his thesis was on the doctrine of Calvinism as found in Herman Melville's Moby Dick so that tells you right there uh, he was a smart guy very scholarly and so Dr. Herbert did not know the meaning of shortcut. And so our assignment, of course, was Moby Dick. And I didn't have time to read it because I was too busy being a freshman. And, and so I bought the Cliff Notes version of Moby Dick. And Cliff Notes are those little pamphlets that give you the chronology and all the, the outline of the novel. And you can read it in 30 minutes and get the gist of the novel. And, and they are the scourge of good literature. And so the day for class uh, came and, and the discussion on Moby Dick. And so Dr. Herbert looked at me and he said, Mr. Poole, Captain Ahab had a wooden leg. And I said, yes, he did. And then he said, was it a right or left leg that was his wooden leg? And, and, and I looked at him, and I said, I don't know. And, and he, he looked at me, and he said, well, it's most important because all the way through the novel, he is talking about his wooden leg and if it was his right leg or his left leg because in Calvinism, it makes a difference which leg it was. And so I, 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 I didn't know. And so he walked over, and in my backpack, he pulled out the copy of the Cliff Notes, and he said to me, he said, Mr. Poole, there is no shortcut on the road to understanding. And then he gave it back to me. And that lesson stuck with me all of my life because our culture tells us to take a shortcut. Take the shortcut whenever possible. If we're studying, use Cliff Notes. If we're out of shape, drink a shake. We don't have to exercise. You can take a pill and lose weight. Um, you, you can travel, but use your map quest on your phone in order to find the shortest route, right? And so we always want to take the shortcut. Have you ever thought of the last time you actually grated cheese? You remember the cheese grater and you would get your big block of cheese and you would take it up and down the cheese grater, you would always damage your knuckles. 
When was the last time we ever grated cheese, right? We buy it in the pre-packaged grated cheese packets. That's what we do. And so the quickest way, the shortcut, may not be the best way. And so this imagery in John's Gospel where Jesus says, Beware the one who climbs in the sheepfold by another way. In other words, beware the ones that are taking the shortcut, who are hopping over the wall, sneaking in, the one who doesn't use the gate, the one who takes the shortcut, beware. beware. The thieves, the, van the bandits, and the ones who do harm, the ones who steal and victimize, they will be the ones that take the shortcut. They don't use the gate. They scare the sheep. They frighten the lambs. They jump over the wall. They have a harmful intent. In John's chapter 10, there are lots of images of shepherds and gates and gatekeepers and sheepfolds and voices. And so the gatekeeper opens the gate for the good shepherd to enter and call his flock. And then Jesus says, I am the gate. Enter by me and be saved. Now gates are funny things. Uh, gates are, they have latches and springs and hooks and hasps. They can be wooden, they can be steel, they can be vinyl. They can be mesh wire, that link wire. And my favorite gate of all time is what I call the West Texas bump gate. And, and it pivots. And you bump it with your car bumper, and then it swings open, and you drive through, and it automatically closes back. Gates show us where to enter. Gates allow us to enter, and then keep bad things out. You don't stay in the gate. You enter by it. And so Jesus is the gate. Jesus is how we enter into the presence of God, the peace of God, and what God intends for us in our world. In other words, Jesus is saying there are no shortcuts in our spiritual lives. There are also no shortcuts in addressing our current condition with COVID-19. There are no shortcuts until we can finally assure one another that we will do no harm and be safe together. There are no shortcuts. And what I have said on numerous times is the only way out is through. We have to go through this period in order to emerge on the other side as the people who God intends us to be. We have to extend ourselves. We have to stretch ourselves. We have to walk a little farther we have to use the gate. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in our sobriety. There are no shortcuts in our serving. There are no shortcuts in being the people that God intends us to be. Jesus is saying, I am the gate. Enter by me and you will be saved. And so there's a second image, and I think it bears our taking time to look at it, where Jesus says the sheep follow the good shepherd because they know his voice and they follow and so a question whose voice are we hearing and whose voice are we following it's a reflective question because sometimes we listen to the voices that are counter to the voice of christ recently we heard a voice saying to us you need to get as much toilet paper as you can and you need to stockpile it in your home. We listened to the voice that said, you should be afraid and so be fearful of everyone around you. We heard the voice that said it was okay to not care about our neighbors. And so we didn't care. And so there, there are lots of voices over the airwaves and that we are hearing right now but Jesus' voice is the one that we need to hear. When Jesus says things like, follow me, forgive, care and feed and clothe and visit and share and give, that's the voice that we need to listen to. And so if our lives have not been going as we thought they should, then maybe we need to listen to the voice of Jesus. 
And so why would Jesus describe himself as a gate? And so the last part of verse 10 says that I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundant life through Jesus Christ. Abundant life is plentiful, oversufficient, great, abounding, full, and overflowing. Abundant life in Jesus. And the voice of the shepherd, have you ever noticed that shepherds don't yell? They don't scream. They don't threaten. They don't intimidate. They don't scare. The effective shepherd whispers. And the sheep hear his voice calling their name, and they follow. Non-anxious, soft talking, the voice of the shepherd. Listen for the shepherd's whisper. I'll close with a story by Marianne Baird, who wrote the short story, The Whisper Test, about her life. And so I'll share it as she shared it. I grew up knowing that I was different, and I hated it. I was born with a cleft palate and had corrective surgery. And when school started, my classmates made it clear to me how I must look to others. I was a little girl with a misshapen lip and the crooked nose and the garbled speech and the crooked teeth and and one deaf ear. And so when somebody asked me, what happened to your lip? I, I would always lie, and I would say that I've fall, I, I fall, fallen down, and, and I cut it on a piece of glass. And somehow, that made it more acceptable that I was in an accident instead of being born this way. And so I was convinced that no one outside my family could love me. And then my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Leonard, changed my life. We all adored her. She was short and round and happy and always had a smile. And back then, we would have an annual hearing test that was called the whisper test. And and I learned that if I didn't completely cover my good ear, then when I was testing my bad ear, I could still hear the test and I always passed. And so I was the last one in line that year And I stood at the door of the classroom as Mrs. Leonard stayed at her desk. And she would whisper a sentence, and then I would repeat it back. And she would say, the sky is blue. And I would say, the sky is blue. She would say, your shoes are new. And I would say, my shoes are new. And then she said seven words that changed my life. I wish you were my little girl. I wish you were my little girl. You see, it's always the shepherd's voice and the shepherd's whisper. Do you hear it? Jesus says, I am the gate. Enter by me. I have come so that you might have life and have it abundantly. Let us pray. Indeed, O God, we turn to you. And so in times like this, may we truly listen for your voice. And so give us the heart and the ears and the mind to focus on you so that we might hear your word for us. And so bless us this day, for it is in your name we pray. Amen. We turn now to the sacrament of Holy Communion. And if you have your hymnal at home, we'll be using the brief order on page 15. And so we begin with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Forgive us of our sins, O Lord, and call us to a new and right relationship with you. We remember Jesus' teachings, his miracles, and life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. We also remember his suffering and death and resurrection. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on us scattered. As we turn to you, O Lord, may we be the body of Christ, not only within the walls of this building, but beyond the walls of this building. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We take the bread and we remember the words of Jesus. And when he took the bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Every time you eat from this, remember me. And then Christ took the cup, and he blessed it, and then he poured it out, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Every time you drink from this, remember me. Amen. So I encourage you to go now and to prepare your elements for the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, bread of some form, juice of some form. And so if you will get those now. Let us take the bread, the body of Christ that was given to us. drink of the cup of salvation that has come to us through Jesus Christ. As we come to the close of our service today, if you are feeling that nudge of the Holy Spirit to profess faith in Christ, to join our community of faith, be a part of our congregation, then I invite you to reach out to Shirley Womack, who is on our staff, and she will guide you into the membership of our church. You may reach her by calling our church at 972-771-5500. You may also email Shirley at swomack at fumcrockwall.com and we will be glad to welcome you into our congregation. This week we welcomed into the membership of our church John and Mary Ann Arnold. They are coming uh, to our church after having been a part of our congregation, usually at our 930 service uh, for some time, and we welcome them into the membership of our church. Also this week, you will encounter someone that has been listening to the wrong voice. And so I encourage you to encourage them to listen for the whisper of Jesus Christ in their hearts and lives. And so receive now this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.
us today in worship. We look forward to connecting again with you all next Sunday. Have a great week. Bye.